really good event that lots of people should sign up for because there is still some space available. Already, I think somewhere around 400 people have um, signed up and indicated they are going to attend this event. It is at the Ingleside Hotel. That's the old Country Springs in Pewaukee, just off the interstate, where uh, Kevin Nicholson's group, No Better Friend Corp., is going to be hosting an event designed to educate and empower people on, number one, what critical race theory is, and number two, what to do to fight back against it. This is something I'm very pleased people are paying attention to. It's something that I have been noticing coming on education for a long time, but now that parents have been able to see it, uh, they are horrified at what they're seeing. It's now very, very late in the game, though, so what do you do? I'm going to just quickly read read uh, an email that I got from someone, and then I'm going to introduce Kevin Nicholson here in just a moment. This is someone regarding the Germantown school board meeting, where Germantown, Germantown, Red Germantown, is going to see critical race theory foisted upon it, whether people want it or not. And there are activists that have been essentially hired in service to promoting CRT. This is what uh, I just received. I was just made aware that numerous individuals last night at the Germantown school board meeting spoke in favor favor of CRT began their statements with, quote, I don't work for company blank, but here's their equity statement. What I came to find out was the superintendent of Germantown School District released the names of speakers who spoke against CRT at a prior meeting. They went the uh, the pro CRT people then looked up their company's equity statements and read them out loud to threaten and embarrass the people who are against CRT. Um, that's just news today that I received. Kevin Nicholson, this is the kind of crap that people have to contend with if they if they speak out against the insinuation of poison in the school system. Great to have you, by the way. Thanks, Vicki. Thank you for having me, and thank you for letting us talk about that event this Thursday. So this is Marxism in action, and you and I have talked about the left and their tactics many times in the past, and this is it. I mean, this is literally trying to use a combination of economic and social pressure in order to force ideological conformity on people. And in this case, ideological conformity in the, in the shape of CRT, critical race theory, means getting people to de- not deny the truth of our history, <laughs> of our country, of frankly the world too, in order to try to basically segregate people by race and pit them against each other. 100%. It's just a replacement practice of Marxism. It's repugnant, That's, too. It is immoral. It is. it is the antithesis of what the American creed means. And so it's all based on this claim, unproven claim, of systemic racism. But we should probably d- demand a definition of what systemic racism is. I'll define it for you. That the actual system of our culture and government tend toward racism against black people. And the proof of that is disparate impact. That's actually your definition of systemic racism. Racism systemically means that every institution, everything about culture, everything about our economy tends to produce racist outcomes. And their, and their proof is that there are different outcomes for different people. And some of those people are black. Well, and this is this goes back to a couple of things. I've been as I've been talking about critical race theory, this concept of the word equity that you brought up, that's being subbed in by proponents of critical race theory to replace the word equality, which of course is core to the American freedom and belief system, which is that we're all born equal, same rights given to us by God. What we do with those rights, what direction we take our life, is fundamentally up to us in this system of government that we have here in this country. Equity says that basically the government and the left decide what is an acceptable outcome for everybody based on their demographic or their their ethnicity or their race or whatever the case is that they're using as the measuring stick. But the government and the left decides what's okay, and then they enforce that. And you brought up the exact perfect parallel, which is disparate impact, which is where the Justice Department goes into various financial metrics or where they're looking at what kind of loans are given out for homes or the cases says that if the outcomes are not uh, are, are not acceptably enough uh, equal in, 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 again, whatever demographic number they're looking for, that they will go in and they'll basically rewrite the system and decide how things really should be allocated. Well, in reality, it's this. And one of the things that we do at No Better Friend and we really focus on is education reform. And we do it for a reason, because there's too many disadvantaged kids in the state of Wisconsin who happen to be Black and happen to be Hispanic who are not going to schools that are performing. We believe that education reform should allow them to get into good schools faster. Guess who's against that? It's the left. It's the teachers union. 
it's the very same people that are pushing this idea that the entire problem is, is the color of skin. No, the problem is that underperforming schools have been allowed, and not only allowed, but have been enforced by the left on so many disadvantaged people in this country, when what we as conservatives believe is get a good education, change life trajectory early, and open up doors for people to go out and achieve their dream. And guess what? Everybody's happier and everybody's in a better place. And critical race theory doesn't solve any of those problems. In fact, it makes them worse. And I, I think one of the important statistics to share here is that you dial back to 2009 and 40% of Americans said at that point we, that they thought that race relations in our country were a serious problem. Dial it forward to today, it's two thirds of Americans. We are working backwards as a society and it is by design because the left and their proponents in the media are pushing this in order to pit people against each other. So look at the achievement gap. And, and, and next time you run into somebody who's defending CRT, say is the achievement gap a problem that needs to be solved. Because what CRT says about the achievement gap is that the achievement gap is a racist measurement and that it's not a problem to be solved. The problem to be solved is education. The problem to be solved is expecting a right or wrong answer in math. The problem to be solved is expecting competency and literacy in English. That's the problem to be solved because literacy and competency and the right answer in mathematics and and scientific rigor is racist. That's part of the systemic racism racism we're talking about here, folks. So what ultimately means to happen, uh, courtesy of the left, and they're not trying to solve the problem of racism, what ultimately means to happen is that everyone is made dumber and ultimately totally dependent on a government that hates their guts. I want to make that clear. This government hates your guts. And that's what this ultimately, this ultimately wants to put you at the mercy of people who hate you. And that's the thing that really frustrates me. That nobody, nobody who's promoting CRT cares about the achievement gap or the fact that black kids can't read or the fact that, that people in the inner city in poverty stricken areas are overwhelmed and overrun with crime and violence and chaos. That's not a, that's not a bug of the system. That's the feature. And the more chaos, the closer we're going to get to total collapse, and the sooner we will get to a government that hates you controlling all your choices. And that is the plan. And I'll tell you, we're going to talk about this on Thursday at the event. And, and I, it's so important, right, that we reach out to people in every corner of this state. I don't, I don't care what they look like. I don't care where they came from. And explain to them that, look, here's the really crazy insidious thing. People are, are convincing you to hate other Americans at the same time. They are depriving your kids of the actual education they need in order to succeed in life. Yes, part of that is understanding the full context of history. I, I, I was just at the Milwaukee Juneteenth event, and it was a great event. People were extremely happy there earlier in the day when I was there. We had some good conversation. However, remember, Juneteenth is a commemoration of all the people that fought to actually end slavery in our country and extend our country's promise to everybody. That is how Juneteenth should be, shot, should be actually taught to people about the evolution of our society and all the people from different backgrounds who came together to open up this opportunity. Taking the next step, guess what? There are kids in China who are from age five on learning the English language because the government mandates it, because it's the language of international commerce, and they want their citizenry to be in a position to go out and succeed. Go ahead and look at the engineering and the mathematics uh, standards in countries like China and India and where students are being pushed. And then we can argue that their systems of education are too test centric, and that's a good argument to have. But guess what? No one in those countries is trying to find ways to lower education standards to teach people less. And yes, those countries are guilty of manipulating their histories, particularly China, and lying to their people about the truth. So here we are in America with the left trying to create the worst of both worlds, where they're destroying educational standards and making it such that American kids aren't able to compete long term. At the same time, they're also adopting uh, the practices of the Chinese Politburo in terms of trying to manipulate history in order to enforce ideological it. conformity. Th there's a wonderful book everybody should read, um, and it's by a woman named Yanmi Park, Y-E-O-N-M-I Park. Jordan Peterson actually just did a fascinating two-hour podcast with her. Um, her book is called In Order to Live. She's a North Korean defector, and what she describes is a culture that was so closed off from history and language, and the, the meaning of words was so totally manipulated. She had no idea what it meant to be slave or free.
She didn't have an understanding of what the concepts of those words were because in her culture, in order to control everyone, history was erased and reduced to the Kims and and freedom and slavery were not words that were defined. So by the time she actually escaped the miserable conditions of of her existence, which, by the way, was in the mid-1990s, she's a young woman, uh, and she encountered these concepts, she didn't understand what it meant. That's the goal. That's the ultimate goal of the left is to totally reorder our understanding of life itself in the vision of what the elites choose for us. Kevin, it's so insidious that right now it could just be about wrecking education and making us less competitive than China. But over time, it could destroy the very history of what made this country great in the first place. Because if you don't remember it and you've never learned it, there's no way you're going to be able to argue yourself out of it. You're 100% right. And, and, and if anyone doesn't think it can get to that point, I would ask that person to say, did you think we'd be at this point 24 months ago, 36 months ago, right? Look how quickly this is evolving, how it's changing. Did you really think that school board members would be uh, basically blacklisting members of their community right. and trying to get activists to try to get them fired from their job? Which is right. That's all in the service, right, of promoting a basic racist ideology, <laughs> ideology that's meant to pit people against each other. Did any of us think that could happen in the United States of America over this course of, of time? And I think it is important to say that this has been happening for many, many years, and that is highly problematic. And one of the conversations we need to have as conservatives is looking back at our elected officials and politicians, because we as conservatives, we elect people to office. We expect them to keep an eye on the ball. We do not live through politics and government. We have our church. We have our family. We have our private um, sector jobs that keep us busy with life and full lives. But I do think that way too many elected officials, including those on the right, have taken their eye off the ball. I know you haven't. I know other important people have not. But too many elected officials have and have allowed this to get to this point in the first place. And to your point, it's far advanced now. And I do appreciate that there's people in the legislature now, and that includes like Steve Noss and Scott Allen, uh, Rick Gundrum, Barb Dietrich, Dave Murphy, and others who are putting forth yeah. legislation. We, which will help to, to push back on this. We have to, I have to take a break, Kevin. I'm really, really sorry to have to cut you off like that. NoBetterFriendCorp.com is where people, people can find the event and get tickets to the event. It's free coming up on Thursday. Kevin Nicholson, thanks a ton. Thanks, Vicki. Talk yeah. to you soon. All right, we are going to take a break here on the Vicki McKenna Show. I'll be right back. 